Guys, if you can't, just give us just a little bit because it's, it, it's just going to be short, sweet, and wonderful. And uh, a couple things I just want to say about this is just Phyllis, my mother. What? Don't you dare. Do I have to fucking your story? <laughs> she what? is. And my dear sister, Charlotte, is here. Let's give her a hand, too. But it's nice that someone came up with an idea. Let's, let's talk to a legend before the legend passes. And let's give a nice hand for Elizabeth Harper. I don't know if anyone knew this. I knew February was... Afro-American Month, History Month, but it's also Women History Month. March. March is Women's History Month. Oh, sorry. sorry. Okay, sorry. it went to March. They, they made it to March. And April's Poetry Month. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> we got to make sure we're politically correct tonight, so I apologize on that. Uh, <laughs> hey, I'm going to give you the Joe Biden kiss. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we have a limited number of these tonight. If you guys would like one, let us know. We're going to print some more up. It is a photograph of my mother. It is a mural over here on the wall. And it is the article, one of the articles about Phyllis that was presented in Chicago Sometimes. And, I, you know, God, Phyllis in Chicago Sometimes, you know. What? Son, why do they want to do this with me? I'm tired. Oh, <laughs> Mom, let's go. Let's do it. This is great. You know, this is what you did, what you established here. And I don't know if anyone, maybe we have some first timers here, which we're welcome to have. But we opened our doors February 4th of 1954. So we just celebrated our 65th anniversary. And uh, I just uh, I want I want to say I want to thank my family and Charlotte and my wife Eileen and my daughter Elizabeth and my family and friends and everyone that's been working here and helping us out for a number of years. This wouldn't happen without you guys. And this is so important that people can still go to a place where you can talk to each other, and that got drowned out by music. And we, I think one thing that we did do, that maybe Elizabeth won't, we just changed the front, uh, front glass block, but we changed it with the new glass block. So that's the new glass block. So with the new glass block, it's not even a year old, but it's going to be 65 years old later. But thank you all for coming tonight. And I want to tell a little bit about Elizabeth Harper. She's a graduate of Latin High School, and she's very knowledgeable in a lot of different things. And she put a lot of work into this. And she put her performance out at the hideout, and we were just fortunate enough to be there. And she, she just, you know, came up with the idea of, hey, Phyllis was a woman in, in the 1950s, women were housewives. My mother bought this place without my father. And, you know, that's just an amazing accomplishment. <laughs> and what's even more amazing that we're all here tonight to experience this nice thing that's going to happen for us. Ladies and gentlemen, Elizabeth Harper with Phyllis Jasper. Uh, Phyllis Jascott. Phyllis Kill 
Majewski was born on December 20, 1926 in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, the only child of Polish immigrants. Her father was a coal miner. I had this all, oh there, oops. I, I, I was trying to scroll through it. So anyhow, okay, so that, those are Phyllis's parents. And then this is supposed to work a certain way. There, and then there's still the simple guy. Woo! Um, okay, so uh, her father was a coal miner and her mother stayed home and took care of the house and the farm. Phyllis started playing the accordion at age 14, she came to Chicago on a bus by herself in 1944 when she was just 18 years old with a suitcase, an accordion, and a dream. She knew she wanted to play in bands, and that's just what she did. She also had several businesses, including Phyllis's Musical Inn, which is today Wicker Park's oldest existing live music venue, a large family, and a whole lot of fun. If you're thinking coming to Chicago on your own as a young woman in 1944 to play accordion in polka bands was a bold thing to do, you're right. Not many women were doing that at that time. She was one of the first, a lady of music. Phyllis is a strong personality, a born performer who loves the limelight. She does what she wants to do and has a good time doing it. Phyllis found plenty of opportunities to play in the large section of Chicago on the near northwest side known as Polish Downtown a political, cultural, and social capital for the many Polish immigrants in Chicago and throughout the United States, where people spoke both English and Polish. Polish immigration to Chicago had been increasing since the second half of the 19th century and increased even more dramatically during and after World War II. Division Street between Ashland, Milwaukee Avenue, and Western was known as Polish Broadway. All along the strip, there were bars, most of them featuring polka music. People would have a drink and dance at a place and then go on to the next. Phyllis loved the youthful energy of Chicago. Not only did Phyllis play in bands along the strip in Chicago, she also played in touring bands. In 1948, she had her first daughter, Charlotte. In her decade in Chicago before buying the building that became Phyllis's Musical Inn, she had other businesses, including a family-style restaurant on North Avenue and a luncheonette on Division across from what is now Phyllis's Musical Inn. When the building at 1800 West Division went up for sale, a member of her band told her she should buy it. Her first reaction was, what? She had only $9,000, but she put that down, and thus Phyllis's Musical Inn was founded on February 4, 1954. Was she scared taking on such a big endeavor? No, she knew she could make it work. Her parents had sold the farm in Pennsylvania and came to Chicago. Phyllis, her parents, and her daughter Charlotte all lived in the apartment above the bar. Phyllis ran the bar all on her own, swept the floor, kept inventory, slung beer, but most importantly, charmed the customers and played her music. And boy, was she charming. A little bit sexy, body and blue, and in her own words, I was silly with all of them. <laughs> Phyllis was an independent businesswoman and did what she had to do. It was tough when she needed to be. It was tough doing all that work on her own, running the bar, playing music at nights, as well as being a single mother, but she persisted. She had a lot of fun, no doubt some mishaps too, but kept going. Most of all, she loved all the people she met at the bar. Phyllis's band featured Phyllis on accordion, accompanied by a bartender who was the drummer, and a trumpet player or clarinet player who alternated. The stage was where the DJ booth is now, over there. Um, they played Friday, Saturday, and Sunday evenings. The bar was open from 12 p.m. to 12 a.m. During the work week, folks would come into the bar after work and have a few beers before they went home. Clement Jascott danced in the bar one night. They married in August of 1956 and had three children in rapid succession, Clem, Marie, and Susan. And we'll see if we can Oh, there. And 
there's that really cute plate in their house. Um, with, again, with the handlebar mustache. She did that for her wedding. Oops, she did? And she had all the people who stood up for her, she made them a plate. Just like that. Wow. With their names. Oh, man. I didn't know Phyllis was a plate. their names? And it's got a at the bottom. Hey, uh... Jealous much, Phyllis? on the next here. Okay, and then that's that's the picture from the mural. That's uh, Phyllis playing on the accordion, and then that's, that's Clement Sr., again with the handlebar mustache uh, behind her. Okay, so... Um, I'm sorry? <laughs> um, Clement Sr. was a very tall and strong, fun-loving man with a handlebar mustache. He worked as a roofer and also behind the bar at Phyllis's Musical Inn after the babies came. He would bartend during the day, and then at night, Phyllis would put on a dress, stockings, heels, lipstick, one of her many blonde hair pieces, and come downstairs and play accordion in her band. The children were frequently in the bar and grew up in the bar. When she thought the apartment was too small for their growing family, she went ahead and bought a house in Albany Park. She didn't tell anyone she was going to do it. She just went ahead and bought the place and then told Clem Sr. they were moving. That was in 1962. Her parents continued to live in the apartment above the bar. The Wicker Park neighborhood has gone through significant changes during the decades of Phyllis's musical in existence. In the 1960s and 1970s, its Spanish-speaking, mainly Puerto Rican population grew. Some of them had been displaced by the gentrification of the Old Town and Lincoln Park neighborhoods. The Latin Kings, a Chicago street gang, also founded in 1954, grew in its influence. In the 1970s, many families were leaving Chicago for the suburbs. The once grand buildings of Wicker Park were in deteriorating condition. There were many arson fires motivated by insurance fraud. The neighborhood had a rough reputation. According to Phyllis, the worst time for the bar was during the race riots in the 1960s. During the riots after Martin Luther King's assassination in April of 1968, the bar was closed for three days. After that, security bars were put over the windows of Phyllis's musical inn. Those were taken down before 2000, uh, perhaps to get rid of demons before the millennium. <laughs> um, people loved Phyllis and her family. The bar's clientele from the neighborhood would call Phyllis Mama Bear and call Clem Sr. Papa Bear and Clem Jr. Junior Bear. place where they could have a beer and relax and feel safe. People would come for a beer before they went to a Bulls or Hawks game at Chicago Stadium, which was eventually replaced by the United Center in 1984. In 1983, Phyllis needed her son, Clem Jr., to help with Phyllis's musical inn. She bought a place in Lake Villa, which would become the bar and music venue Hidden Point Tap. This was another example of Phyllis just going ahead and buying real estate on her own without telling her husband, Clem, first. <laughs> She had that place from 1983 to 1989. Hidden Point Tap was right on the lake, about 10 miles from Wisconsin. People would come for a beer and dock their boats. Uh, there were lots of boats and lots of bars. Uh, before a large mall got built by Route 132, it was more of a farming community. People would go on golf outings and then come to Hidden Point Tap. There was a pig roast every year in August with camping and music, live bands playing. People liked getting out of the city. Clem Jr. brought in new kinds of music, reviving the live music scene at Phyllis's Musical Inn. 
as a big kickoff on September 8, 1984, Buddy Guy and Junior Wells played at Phyllis's Musical Inn. Smile and Bobby opened for them. Smile and Bobby still has a regular gig at Phyllis's Musical Inn, playing first Thursdays of the month. Buddy Guy has played at Phyllis's three times. And let's see what picture we have. Oh, there's Smile and Bobby uh, playing in the beer garden. Um, the beer garden was something Phyllis always wanted to do. She wanted people to have a nice space to enjoy themselves. After Clem Jr. started running things, they built the wall and poured the concrete, and it was ready by Puerto Rican People's Parade in June of 1985. Uh, the distinctive murals that decorate the walls of Phyllis's Musical Inn were painted in 1985, 1986, and 1987 by artist Shelley Hutchinson with assistance from Karen Parisian. In the 1990s, Wicker Park was gentrifying, and Phyllis's Music Inn was becoming the place for alternative bands. Veruca Salt played their first gig there. Slamming Watusis were discovered there. Uh, various celebrities have come to Phyllis's Music Inn, including Sean Penn, Norman Lear, Matt Dillon, and Terry Hebmert of WXRT. Uh, when the 1987 film Light of Day was being filmed in Chicago, uh, including some scenes at Phyllis's Music Inn, Various actors in that movie came to Phyllis's, including Michael McKeon and Joan Jett. Clem tells the story of how Joan Jett was happy that he had a 45 of Joan Jett and the Blackhearts on the jukebox. Um, these days, uh, there's something going on every night of the week at Phyllis's, including jazz, blues, comedy, singer-songwriter nights, folk, alt-country, death metal, punk, garage rock, etc. Phyllis's Musical Inn is a place where... I'm sorry? Comedy night. Yeah, I think I said comedy night. Um, and uh, Phyllis's Musical Inn is a place art. where... Yep, oh, yeah, I'm going to get to the art part. Yeah, oh, I'm, I'm, it's coming. <laughs> um, okay, so Phyllis's Musical Inn is a place where touring bands and those just starting out can get a chance but there are also a lot of regular acts that keep coming back, a lot of regular customers, too. Um, and then here comes the art part. Let's see what happens here. Oh, well, this is, the, this is about the pumpkin. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, this was an article about, about the pumpkin carving that happens uh, every Halloween. Uh, and Craig Perry, the artist, started that, and so there's a, there's the article, and then there's a picture of the, um, the famous musicians. He carves into pumpkins, and then there's a picture of Clem with his mother, Phyllis. Um, so, uh, so for several months, people have been coming to Phyllis's Musical Inn on Sunday afternoons to draw and make art. The event is called Art 101 Conf Confidential, instigated by artist Tom Billings and accompanied by the music of Jamie Wagner and Taylor Morse. Um, Phyllis's Musical Inn has featured the artwork of many different Chicago artists over the years and is always looking to do more art shows. Artist Craig Perry started the annual pumpkin carving event. His elaborate portraits of famous musicians carved into actual pumpkins have been showcased at Phyllis's Musical Inn and also at Millennium Park. Um, Phyllis's Musical Inn has been a checkpoint for Shiditarod, the food drive race, every year since its inception in 2006. This coming 4th of July will be the 33rd anniversary of the annual day-long celebration and all-star jam that has been happening in Phyllis's Musical Inn in the Beer Garden since 1986. Um, let's see what other pictures we've got here. Oh, there's some art by Diane Navarro. Diane Navarro, Confidential. Vision made her beloved bar successful. Phyllis's Musical Inn still has the same original wallpaper Phyllis picked out in the 1950s. The beer cooler is the same. The cool brew sign over the restrooms is the same. The vintage glass bricks were recently replaced, preserving the original style so it lasts for years to come. Though Phyllis's Musical Inn is in many ways the same as it was back in 1954 physically, it has adapted to the changing times by bringing in a truly eclectic cornucopia of music and performance. Yet Phyllis's Musical Inn has stayed consistent in its mission to provide a welcoming place for folks to socialize, drink, dance, enjoy music, and be comfortable amongst friends and strangers in a true third place. 
Phyllis loved people and wanted them to have a good time. She was an entertainer who got people to dance, to mingle, and to be happy, and that vibe is still here. When Clem took over booking the music, he envisioned Phyllis's musical inn as being a fun place to go, but he didn't foresee the magnitude of what would be accomplished at Phyllis's musical inn, that it would be a place that would help new bands get started. In Phyllis's words, time marches on and things change. As Clem Jr. says, the youth of America are coming to Phyllis's. So and then there's uh, the front with the glass door, and then oh, and then that's the the article um, about Phyllis's in the Sun Times, and there's there's Phyllis at the bar. So that's that's it. I got through it. Thanks so much. You can take pictures now. <laughs> We need some pictures. Somebody, yeah, somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Elizabeth Harper. Yeah. What a wonderful presentation, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Yeah. Let's give her a nice hand. Ladies and gentlemen, Elizabeth Harper. Outstanding, outstanding. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. We're gonna take a little break. Uh, she's gonna come up with her little thing coming on. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give her a nice hand, huh? What a wonderful job she did. And her presentation was incredible. Elizabeth Harper. Thank you from Phyllis's Musical End. Okay, Joey, you're getting one right now. And Jamie, you're putting music on. And we're gonna have uh, Elizabeth have her show up. Again, Elizabeth Harper. What a beautiful job. And thank God, I was gonna say is that somebody interviewed my mother before she's still not with us. But you know, she's with us, and that's yes, great. And that's just awesome, because you always hear about these documentaries after the fact. But hey, Elizabeth Harper. And thank you, uh, Philistines, friends, family, everyone for coming out. We really appreciate this. And uh, John, you have a question? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear. What's the question? Okay, you got that, Elizabeth? Okay. Any other questions? Yes! Hip Hip Junior Bear! Okay. Hey, thanks everyone for coming out. Let's give a nice hand for my sister Charlotte, my wife Eileen, and my daughter Elizabeth. I love you all, and her. Brother-in-law Rick, my brother-in-law Rick, her brother Rick, and all our staff, Chris, Shannon, everybody, Paul. Thanks, okay guys, this is a great, great event. Elizabeth Harbour, thank you very much. All right, let's get the music going, we got some more stuff going on. Joe Anas is in the house. All right, everyone, let's keep it going. Hip, hip.